Public art helps to build empathy, it helps to break down barriers, it connects people, and it makes us a more inclusive society. Community art is a really effective way of communicating large and complicated issues that people really struggle to understand. Art has always with it a social context, so whether you're a painter or a sculptor who works in a formal gallery context or you're someone who's doing public performance or social practice work, there's always a social context. All that context that the art works in is really alive. They're trying to make work that lives in that public sphere, gets interpreted by people in all these different ways. I loved museums, but I think over time I've also realized what has been included and excluded from those spaces and how art doesn't just exist, you know, inside these walls, but exists out in public. We decided to apply for a grant, a social art grant from the Kenneth Raynham Foundation. And they were having a call to local arts groups to submit proposals that really gave an influence to place. And wow, we could not have even predicted. artist who's very interested in illuminating systems and infrastructure and the things that kind of surround us that kind of tie us together politically and socially but are not often seen. So I'd been working with the Exploratorium for I think a few years prior to hatching this particular piece of the work. Mutual Air is a collection of bells. We got about 25 installed throughout Oakland so that they could weave together as a single soundscape. So keyed directly to particulate matter, so to air quality. So something kind of subtle and ambient but also a fairly good indicator of what the air was like at that moment. I would describe them as like wind chimes for air quality. You could see the art once I had seen the bell. I just thought it was an incredible thing for people in our community to see how art and nature can be fused together. It's able to actually intervene in a political conversation in a really distinctly different way. Not only is it an opportunity to host art in the neighborhood, in an accessible place where people can interact with it, but it's important that we confront these conversations in order to be able to do something about it. Our air is mutual air. It is around us all the time and we don't notice it, but we share it with everybody in our local location and also throughout the planet. People's Kitchen Collective is a food project at the intersection of art, food, and social justice. We do big community meals, we do art installations, we do meals in the street. The art that we do is this art of gathering, this art of bringing people together. The original concept is a four-part meal series and it's called From the Farm to the Kitchen to the Table to the Streets. We are able to generate this idea about West Oakland specifically. What would it look like if we went to a museum to taste, to touch, to kind of test those boundaries of like what it is that we consider art and not. When you come to a people's kitchen meal, you're listening to poets, musicians, and DJs, and storytellers, dancers, you're dancing yourself, and then there's the politic of it, and then there's the food itself and the cooking, and all of a sudden you're in this installation. And that is what we wanted to do on a really large scale in a way that we hadn't done before. Sako Dance Theatre primarily focuses on site-specific dances. We make pieces about places and stories mostly that have been overlooked. The genesis for Picture Baby Hunter's Point started with a lot of community interviews to try to capture the community's dreams. The stories and the different interviews and the conversations she's had dictated that storyline. It was almost like the seams. I saw a lot of the individual stories that I had collected and the people that I had gathered really become a part of the show. This particular community has not been seen in this way. The performance was done at the Bayview Opera House, which is really at the center of Bayview. I decided to embrace that idea, and so I used different surfaces on the exterior and the interior to create these different canvases for different parts of the story to be told. We love to bring art out of museums and into places that are accessible and where people wouldn't expect to find it. Art that creates dialogue 
is amazing. You create a public conversation and then that filters into a whole variety of very real world effects. That is what the best art does. It draws you in, it holds you, and it makes you move. That's the magic of, of producing an event and conceiving an event, a place of change and also of reflecting and creating and maintaining culture. Things are possible together that aren't possible alone. It definitely felt like a big shared experience. This is a massive collective project of hundreds of volunteers, of farmers, of researchers, artists, chefs, home cooks, aunties, elders, like all coming together to create this experience. Public art and public history are so important because it gives it back to the very people that should have that. It should be for the people in the community because the people deserve to have access to that art and that expression and to inform it and be a part of it too.